views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff and management of WWDB-TV. When my girl's got the sweetest pussy. Welcome to Sin City Bounty. Dot com. Oh, that was so <laughs> inspired. <laughs> well, I realized at one point I was going to have to do it alone and I wasn't prepared. Like, I didn't gargle. I didn't prep my pipes. That's like, funny. magic happens in this throat. So, <laughs> therefore, i got to keep it primed. Nice. We don't want to do any damage. Welcome to SinCityBounty.com, the only internet, YouTube, radio, inspirational podcast about fat chicks. Or by fat chicks. But actually, it's about everything. Mostly sex. Because it always slides into poop. Always slides into poop. That reminds me, I meant to print another article, but again, I have the whole work (laughs) issue. Right. Um, But it's about what happens when you eat ass wrong. Like... I'm going well, to, I'll pull it up on my phone at one point. You don't have a printer, do you? No, you didn't have a printer. But I think I might bring him one. I don't know. We'll see. So, anywho, welcome to the show. I have on a new project that I'm opening up to all of our Patreon subscribers. If you are a Patreon subscriber, I know I still need to sew that one down. Uh, and you would like to add your own flair to my jacket. Uh, just tell me what patch you want to get. If you send me a link, that's even better. If you can keep it under $10, that's the greatest. I will add your patch to my jacket, and that will be your silent shout-out every time I wear my jacket out or whatever, because apparently I'm getting noticed in public a lot more. I have been got, I've been noticed before in public away from my home, Today, not today. I mean, have you been noticed in your home? Like, you had to specify away yeah. from your home. I'd like to know. Well, because my kid how knows. How many times in your home have you been noticed? My kid knows I'm internet famous. <sighs> so, um, actually, I would love to have that patch that says I'm internet famous. Like, that would be fucking hilarious. Um, and uh, right now, I've got my subversive radio host patch on from uh, one of my favorite podcasts, Welcome to Night Vale. Check them out. They're awesome. They do not sponsor us whatsoever, but I'd love it if they did. Uh, I was grocery shopping Monday, yesterday, for uh, a binge with my partners. I went to go get snacks. Snacks! Because uh, I can't do anything without snacks. And I am standing at the deli counter. Now, mind you, it's a holiday. I am just going over to my partner's house from my house. So glad I put on a bra, by the way, because I was considering not wearing one. <laughs> And I'm standing at the deli counter waiting for my deli meats because you got to pull a number and wait for them to call your number. And this dude kind of looked like a guy that I sort of met a couple of weekends ago when I was kind of drunk at a pirate party. But I wasn't sure if it was him and I'm really bad with faces and names. By the way, if I've met you for for real and you come and introduce you, come and say hi like we know each other, I will fake it because I probably don't remember you. Anyway, bad with faces and names. Guy looks sort of familiar. But I'm not going to say anything, because if I don't really know him, I don't want to look like a jackass. So I'm just standing there in my clearly worn as pajama pants yoga pants, a tank top, and some flip-flops that don't match anything I have on. Hair is in a fucked up state, and I'm waiting. I've got my little arm basket, because I've already picked up a couple of condiments to go with my meats that I'm getting. And some guy looks Wait, at me. Wait, what kind of condiments do you get to go with meat? Cheese. I mean, cheese isn't a condiment. Cheese is a food group. It can be a condiment. It's a side. It uh, is legit. It's on food group. Okay. Yeah, dairy products. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so this guy keeps looking at me, and I'm like, well, he's cute. Maybe he thinks I'm cute. It's probably not true. But anyway, he's still looking at me, and I we make eye contact, and he goes, hey, aren't you from TV? And I'm like, uh, and he goes, no, you're on the internet. You're on that show. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, love the show, man. My name's... uh." Jason. I'm going to use his real name because that's like a super common name. I was like, hi, Jason. And then I went back to purchasing my deli meats because I'm still very uncomfortable when I get met or recognized in public. It's still very unusual for me. 
aside from when we're at shows with our Sin City Bounty sh- shirts right. on and we're like behind the table with a microphone in front of us, I sort of expect it. But when I'm at a convention in a state that's thousands of miles away from me or when I'm at my local grocery store, the one that I go to almost every single day, that freaks me the fuck out pretty regularly when that happens. I've been recognized uh, twice before at that Smith's. You are just in time to eat red vines. <laughs> red vines. And we also have a show going on. Yes. I knew that. <laughs> but you're Bye. in time for red vines. Because I'm not like super internet famous. I'm only sort of internet famous. So I don't expect it. Every time it happens, I'm like super uncomfortable. I don't know what I'm going to do the first time someone asks me for my autograph, if they ever ask me for my autograph. Someone I don't know, if partners, if you're watching, don't go being smart asses and asking me for my autograph. I'll put it on your ass in a Sharpie. <laughs> At least one of them would like that. But anyway, it'll freak me out. Let I try your iced tea? I've been sitting yeah. here admiring it, even though I have my own drink. It's homebrewed tea. I knew you know it why it looks attractive? It's in a beautiful glass bottle. No, it's plastic. Oh, damn it. It's in a beautiful also, clear bottle. I could see it was cold. I knew it was home brewed, and I knew it was um, no sugar added. Mm-hmm. So and it's delicious. I knew it's my jam. Did you just wipe it down as if my no? Uh, germs it's got condensation on it. on it. It was all condensifying. <laughs> I got this bottle from uh, a tea place here in town because uh, it's got an adorable little like chibi that's cat on it. That's super cute too, by the way. If you guys can see it. But anyway, that's a. Oh, yeah, their name's on their tea yeah. space. There's one over by my office, but we went to one over by the uh, Diabetic Bakery because we were over there a couple for the Pirate Party. Spring Mountain and Decatur. Decatur. Yeah. Super I am tea. just so loving those glasses. Thank you. Are you those the ones you stole? Them, yeah, I stole them from, from the your grandma in law. Grandma in law. <laughs> <clears throat> I like no, them. No, no, no. She's your step grandma. Yes. Step grandma. Step grandma in law. Step granny. Guys, American really families quick. these days, right? Right. <laughs> we have a few people in here. Abby, it's always when you're grocery shopping and not trying to be seen by anyone you know. I know your hair's all For fucked sure. up. Your face is all fucked up. Like everything's fucked up. You're just in your goddamn pajamas and you smell like yesterday. I have this one soccer family. I think I mentioned it last week, but I'm always like picking my nose when I run into them. Like <laughs> once it was on the freeway, head into California, and they're like conking next to me, and I. Even turned to my daughter, and Not I'm like, I'm pretty sure I was just picking. I was, like, digging to another country through my nose. Um, but anyway, uh, Gina's here. She said, I agree, Sierra. It's very weird. And Fernie's watching, said, hi, ladies. Okay. Happy guys, birthday, Fernie. I have a few things to mention really quick. Number one, it was our lovely Fernie's birthday. On Happy birthday, Fernie. Sunday. So we love you. But it is also the birthday of another one of our people, probably the most consistent guy I've ever seen on a regular basis. The most the consistent one, re- the most consistent relationship you've had in three the years. The most consistent relationship I've had in years. The one guy I have not ghosted. Our own Johnny <laughs> had a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Mr. Producer. <laughs> I feel that's worth a titty shot. Show us. <laughs> titty shot. Show you what? No, not you, him. Oh, him. <laughs> I said I feel it's worth a titty shot. Or at least a nipple rub. So show us. <laughs> Ooh, we're As we wait titty. with we're getting, anticipation. We're getting birthday titty from, from Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to show the nipples. Because Sorry, Facebook. Know. Right. You didn't right. get to see that, which means you have to go over to YouTube in six months and see it. So somebody owes you guys 500 bucks. Now. Right? Yeah. Somebody, One of our Patreon please, subscribers does. Please. Lisa said happy birthday, Johnny. Thank you. So what did you do for your birthday? Anything fun? That's no. A no. <laughs> did you get a blowjob at least? No. No? You didn't even get a birthday blowjob. Nope. Did you get a handy? Nope. Not even self-inflicted? What, you mean from somebody else? <laughs> Usually, yeah. <laughs> no. Self-inflicted, she said. <laughs> self-inflicted handy wait hold on you didn't even give yourself a birthday masturbation session like there wasn't a birthday wank or anything no i took the day off he took the day off he gave his hand a rest (laughs) on labor day you're like happy birthday 
Was it Labor Day? Yeah, this was July. Labor Day. Yeah. Hey, Labor cool Day. patch. Thank you. I got it from uh, another podcast, which I've plugged three times now, and I'll plug again. Uh, Welcome to Night Vale. Uh, it's a radio drama about a radio host, <laughs> and they have they had patches a few years ago, and I bought one. And uh, it fits. It does. It's okay, perfect. It's super cute. Make some patches, we ought to make a bunch of stuff. We need the money to do we that. We need merch. Like, bad. We need merch. We have so many we ideas merch. for merch, we just need money for it. One of the things we can do is go to one of those merch stores where we don't have to front the cost. Right, we spring. just have to, right. yeah, we just have we to just have the, the artwork. Um, and we have two graphic artists on staff, and neither one of us has done any of that. And we probably We also should. have a friend of the show who has sent us... Graphic, graphic art, art. We're for just, specific for our show. Um, I don't know if you know this about us, uh, but we're lazy. <laughs> this is a hobby. I mean, it's not like we love doing the show. It's cathartic for a lot of us, isn't that right? Yeah, we, it's that is like correct. our it's like our <laughs> weekly therapy. We would love to make money on this, but we also really like paying our bills. Yes. Um, and in order to turn this into a serious money-making venture like Welcome to Night Vale has done, it takes an enormous leap of faith and sometimes an injection of funds from somebody else. And uh, Now, don't get us wrong. Those of you who follow and uh, uh, help us on Patreon. Patreon, we love. It pays the bills. Yeah. That, that paid for the internet mm -hmm. for our website and stuff because that was down for a little bit because I totally spaced the... I totally didn't get the notifications that it was going to be canceled but yeah, that's all paid some, up we have some fun little behind the scenes stuff that keeps things going yeah. so it's it's helped for that so thank you all to those who do and like i said patreon <laughs> subscribers if you want to put a patch on my jacket send me a link to it uh in our super secret facebook group if you want to get in there and you want to put a patch on my jacket you need to become a monthly patreon subscriber uh, one type subscribers who do more than fifty dollars can tell me what patch to put on my jacket and Wendy said, I thought Toxie selling her undies was the merch. That was a private supply I sent just for you. So that <laughs> have you was, made any money on that That was yet? a private stash. Yeah. No, but she I had to start from scratch listen, last year. I did, I did. The problem is, is that I, I mentioned that before, that I had a, I depleted my underwear supply completely depleted. on accident. Depleted? G gave them away? <laughs> gave them away. She donated them. <laughs> She donated them to a worthy cause. Some other poor fat chick. <laughs> Some fat chick out there is like, I can't believe I found undies in my size of Goodwill. <laughs> Again, in the ones I and keep only a little to. used. Right, only a little used. These ones say naughty and gold sparkles. Those are the. Does I'm Goodwill? About those. Does Goodwill really? Keep? No, I think they dispose of okay. them. Okay, Savers does. I was at Savers the other day uh, because my kid grows like Godzilla, like he's enormous and he just keeps getting bigger. Um, so we shop at Savers because we do not in any way pay full price for clothes he's not going to be able to wear in three months. Um, and I was walking past the aisle and I looked down and there's a whole row of fucking panties and I'm like, Did girls. you check to see if any are mine? <laughs> no, because it was Savers. You donated them to they Goodwill. Worked to Goodwill for and sure. I, I, for moral reasons, don't shop at Goodwill. Anyway. Um, Neither do I, by the way. I know. Uh, and I was like, I have no morals. <laughs> she doesn't. I'll totally shop a good one. I, I have never in my life considered purchasing panties used from anywhere. No but matter what have, cause it is to but, support. But if you don't have panties, then it's your only opportunity to get panties. Because as we know, when you're plus size, when you're this size, they're not cheap. I I know, so, but I am going to. Maybe they couldn't even afford Walmart prices. Yeah, maybe I'm, they need like quarter day at Savers. That and is, if they got mine, then they got some nice uh, Lane Bryant panties. I understand that, uh, but I have also been super poor and needed panties. And I'll tell you, Ross is a very little used resource for big girls. <coughs> they have, they go. I mean, it's it's not hit consistent. It's hit and miss. But if you're poor um, and you go in like once a week just to window shop, number one, it sometimes makes you feel good and maybe you can pick something up for like a buck ninety nine. I'm not supporting shop retail therapy, but I used it. Um, but if you hit up their lingerie section, occasionally they'll get like a huge influx of plus size panties from one of the other stores that can't sell them. 
And, uh, like, I've bought some really nice panties for, like, $2. from Like, a pack of three for 2 bucks. I'm a Hanes or a Fruit of Loon girl at Walmart. I'm telling you. Y'all do what you need to do to cover your bum. And then there's, always, and then there's always going or commando. Don't. There's always going commando. I went commando for many, 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 many years. And I still go commando occasionally now. I do the same. I like to air out the goods. Mm-hmm. Um, Gina, sounds like you ladies need some sugar daddies. Yes, that is correct. I'm trying to find a sugar daddy where I don't have to do any work. So I, if you know, I would like to let you know that both of my happens. partners are okay with me having a sugar daddy. <laughs> Usually that translates. So um, anyway, for those of you who can't see, the patch says subversive radio host. And on first sight, uh, my glasses were down, so I was looking at it all blurry, and I thought it said submissive radio host, which would actually work for Sierra. Either way. They both work. Either way. <laughs> they both work. Yep. I love it. Um, Toxie, do we not just talk about panties? That's Fernie. <laughs> we did. Breda, hola. Hola, Breda. Hola. hola. And then Gina DDs does to Sierra. Yeah. So go to get your panties wherever you need to get your panties. Just do your business. That's all. Fernie Just do says, your business. Fernie says, I'm commando right now. <laughs> Fernie, so am I. <laughs> I am not. Just saying. I've got I've actually got some of my when I was poor and had to buy panties at Ross Panties on right now because they've lasted many, many years. They're pretty blue. They're boy shorts, which I like. I don't know what it is, but I hate throwing out panties no matter how holy or tore up they get. Oh, no. So every now and then, I, when I need to dress nice and I need a nice pair of panties to go with it, or else, you know, you see the seams everywhere, I'll reach into the drawer and I'll pull out that holy pair and I'll go, crap, can't wear those. And I'll just throw them right back in the drawer instead of throwing them out. I mean, I, I'll uh, admit I used to do that as well. I, I am not. But but I'm a, awesome. I'm a quick throw on my daughter's. I'm like, you've worn these six months. Let's go. Throw them away. <laughs> throw them away. I could buy her a pack of 3200 for... Six <laughs> like bucks. Yeah. yeah. Like, all her friends shop at Victoria's Secrets, and I'm like, and your pennies come in a package, so... <laughs> I'm a big, uh, I'm a big fan of the Fruit of Loom or Hanes right. or Just My Size packages of panties. I get, I get the Hanes packages for my kid because uh, he needs boy unders. Um, and he likes, he has, since he was able to pick out his own underwear, he likes boxer briefs. And those are the ones that fit him the best. Because there was another pair that I bought that was like an expensive pair that was like a super soft texture, and was super nice. And he wore them for like three days. And he was like, I could tell he was uncomfortable. I'm like, what's going on? Not three days in a row, but like he'd worn them three <laughs> times. And he was uncomfortable. And I'm like, what's going on? He's like, these underwear pinch my balls. And... I was like, well, out with the pinchy ball underwear, back to, uh... Did you give him the good one? <laughs> um, no, I'm pretty sure I just tossed them, because, you know. Actually, um, I've been, I've been, I see men look fucking sexy in those boxers that are clingy, you mm-hmm. know? The boxer briefs. They're boxer, boxer briefs. briefs. Yeah, yeah. I love those, and I know they make them for women. And I think that's what I want to switch to. They they do. And they make boy shorts for women as well. I don't want boy shorts. Boy shorts are a little bit shorter. Yeah. Boxer briefs come down to about mid-thigh, and they have a thick band on them, and they are super comfy for women. I have a, a, a female pair. I'm um, expecting they're expensive. They are, um, mostly because one of the... They're, you can only get them from a few specialized shops, and if you can find them somewhere else, that would be great. But they're mostly um, online... Um, androgynous clothing shops that make boxer briefs for women um, and holy shit I'll wear dudes I don't care with the little flap in the middle yeah oh. that's where you put your except wallet that, except that they're not cut right for your vagina so they can feel a little weird and they sag in the ass hey I haven't had nothing going on down there for a while so feeling a little <laughs> weird down there while wearing underwear is okay all right, all right, all right. so um, Britta said Ross sells some cute ones she buys them in bulk don't judge her we don't judge anybody on this show. Just saying, we ain't got no right to judge no one. We have been talking about panties for the last 15 minutes. How, who are we to judge? Gina says, I have tons of panties I buy, and when I get them home, they don't fit. Uh, Fernie, I wear the just my size. However, they changed. I don't like them. And Britta wants to know, don't those ones ride up on the thighs? The boxer briefs? No. If they're, if they're mid-thigh, 
Unless you get those weird shaped thighs that are like super skinny at the knees and like super fat on the thigh and like a fat so, person might. No, I've seen people with oddly shaped thighs. <laughs> Cause I'm all like, you are literally describing my thigh right now. <laughs> some some people have different shaped legs and so like knee high socks don't stay on me because my calves are shaped weird. I need a. Uh, wide calf boots although the rest of my leg is super skinny down there so it's weird um it depends on your thigh shape and your booty shape uh if you have a big booty it will pull the leggings up on them so like you probably wouldn't like boxer briefs because it'll pull the leggings up i literally can't wear anything but one if i want it to stay on my ass and not go five feet up my crack or slide up my cheeks. Like, mm-hmm. if I want it to stay in place, there's one kind I can wear. Whereas I have no ass at all. And so those thick band boxer briefs or boy shorts work really, really well on me. Yeah. And uh, when Torrid has them, and they sometimes have them, but not always, I snatch them up when I can. And wear hipsters. I've tried hipsters, uh, but they slide down because I have no ass to hold. I have no hips and no ass yeah. to hold them up with. I'm a, nice I'm a big uh, thigh high brief. The high person. cut? High cut. Yeah. It's my fave. That's because you're a child of the 80s. I am. Gina, I am totally a child of the 80s. I was just thinking about big hair the other day. Guys, there's a term. It's called the shit, and now I'm going to forget it Axos, Axos girls or whatever. And um, it turns out like they're these girls, they're teens and tweens. Who dress like they're in the 90s. Alrighty then. Isn't that co- considered cosplay today? No. No, it's like when we would have 80s parties. It's the same kind of thing. Only now they're having 90s parties and I feel fucking old. Who do you, who do you dress as in the 90s? So here's what they, I'm going to tell you what they wear. You, y'all you met my daughter. I don't know if you ever see, but she wears Crocs. And up until about two weeks ago, she wore scrunchies on her wrists. Those are and 80s things, though, aren't they? Loves the big, 80s, early 90s. Early 90s. And she loves big t-shirts with, like, sayings on them. That's an 80s thing. Um, That's a, also a 90s. But it, it's, it's like Clarissa explains it all kind of girl. But they wear the scrunchie, the, the things are the scrunchies, the Crocs, the hair in a messy bun. I'm going to tell you, you, so you she, ladies are still younger than me, but when you get my age, all the decades kind of meld together. Yeah. Well, she she quickly because she's one of those anti-title girls, like refuses to be classified as anything. Now that there is a classification for her, she's like scrunchies off, <laughs> back to solid ponytails. Like she had to undo everything, minus oh. the Crocs. So because she became an Axos girl, she right, decided right. to get because away from that. Once what she liked had a title, and others started dressing that way, then she's like. Burr. So she's like the exact opposite of my kid. Like she wants to be not like anyone else and be noticed for not being anyone else. My kid gives no shits. He wears all black. I accuse him of being a goth. He's like, no mom, I'm not a goth. And I'm like, but you wear all black. And he goes, that doesn't mean I'm a goth. I was like, all right. When he breaks out the black eyeliner, then you're going to. I told him I would teach him how to put black eyeliner on. And he was like, I'm not a goth mom. Just so you guys know. I love dudes in black eyeliner. Me too. And my son's got those big fucking sweepy eyelashes. <laughs> I want to put mascara and eyeliner. Very on. Adam it's Ant. So bad. That's 80s. Yeah. 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 All right. What else we got? Gina. Oh my God. Crocs are horrid. They are Gina. They Do you are. know Crocs I make a, sneakers now? I have a, quite a few people who are big fans of Crocs, so I don't talk out against them. They, you know, it's, well, you wear what you wear. It's like I like thigh yeah, high on thigh high. High cut underwear, so whatever. So Crocs were like huge years and years ago. And they remained okay with like older people, like my age. Um, but all of a sudden the kids started wearing them. So like all the girls at soccer are wearing Crocs. I see them coming in and out her school. From what I understand, they're super comfortable on your feet. They're super comfortable. And she has what she calls sports mode and casual mode. It depends on where you put the little Croc handle. Granted, they're not the most fashionable thing in the world, but I'll wear flip-flops everywhere. Hell. Yeah. So yeah. whatever. I don't know. I never Crocs will at least it. protect that front part of your foot. <laughs> hey, ladies from Platinum Pussy. Pussy. Platinum pussy. pussy. Wow, we've, we've been seeing you for a while. Yeah. 
What's platinum so, saying? Oh, just hi. She just said hi, ladies. So um, we love to hear what you're up to. So if you're yeah. still, if you stayed on for a few minutes, yeah, shoot that over. So I um, heard a news story this morning about this new app that came out a little while ago, but it has it has rocketed to the top of the charts, because what you do is you upload a selfie of yourself, and then insert yourself into movie scenes. So it's like Face App. I've heard it's about it. It's a Face too. App. Yeah. Right. So it looks really cool. There are scenes from the Titanic in it. There's a whole bunch of scenes in it, which is really cool. But the only thing is there are people that have been kicked off of a few platforms because of identity right, right, uh, right. things. I follow somebody on Instagram that she's a bigger girl, and she recreates movie scenes with fat people. So she'll do iconic movie scenes, but it'll be like bigger girls. You should totally find out her Instagram and we'll so, uh, let her know. A little deeper on that, just like FaceApp was owned by the Russian government, and there may have been some uh, <coughs> use of your face to make other identities for other people. This one's owned by the Chinese government. Oh. Um, so, you know, they say they'll delete them. They'll delete your photos when you delete the app. Yes. How many of you have deleted an app off your phone recently? I do it pretty Listen, regularly to make room guys, for new games. The whole it's being stolen, our identities from here and there. Guys, you cannot even walk into Walmart without your yes, like your person being videoed. Yes, you cannot go to an ATM. You can't go into Seven Eleven. They're not worried. It's all out there. They're not really the worried too much about um, your identity being stolen because you're I, you're right. Your identity can your be identity. stolen in so many ways. It's you know crazy. I guarantee you, your identity has been stolen at least once. Every U.S. citizen has had their identity right. stolen at least. They once. are worried on the upper levels that an identity can be used to open. Uh, monetary involved apps or because there's a lot of face recognition going on mm -hmm. um, I think the newest iPhones have that face app yeah. right right okay. and then there's also the possibility of taking uh, they were talking about it in politics taking a picture of one of the politicians and putting his face on something saying something and then it's not them actually saying you it, could do it now doing yeah they're, they're, they're already, I know, I know they're already doing that they're just making it easier yeah for it right I'm not I'm not like super worried about somebody stealing my identity because honestly they'd pay me to take it back um <laughs> i'd be like nah bitch that's yours now i'm gonna go get me a new irs code <laughs> right. right i'm like my identity's like, stolen i need a new one i'm like do something fun with it <laughs> buy me a house i'm gonna come take it if you put it in my name just saying like go do something way cooler than me yeah Way cooler. Why don't you go steal my identity and rack up some credit on uh, some uh, good credit points on my credit score, and then I can go buy a house with my own identity. The guy who I who I was listening to being interviewed, it was on uh, CBS News or something like that. He says he's played with the app. It's very fun. That's why it has rocketed to the yeah, top of the charts. I'm sure it's it is super fun to do to see yourself in you know in place in movies and stuff. So. But I couldn't even get into fucking Snapchat. I'm not. <laughs> I'm so old. I'm I'm be, I'm I've entered the generation of people who like these new social media apps come out. Like Instagram, people my age use Instagram. I barely use Instagram. I have it. I use it more than I ever used Snapchat. I'm a, I think I sent like two Snapchats. Uh and I don't use it. And so like when FaceApp came out and this new movie app thing comes out and I'm just like Ugh. What's that one TikTok where you like lip sync she loves stuff? This one. It's it does all kinds of things, TikTok. You make your little movies with it. I don't do TikTok. Oh, what do you use? Instagram. Um, yeah, whatever's off of Instagram. Okay. Yeah, no. Don't I know what TikTok is. I set up a TikTok because my niece set up a TikTok. So I set up my TikTok name as niece's name, aunt. It's like, let's just say her name is Betsy, Betsy's aunt. <laughs> and then I followed her. That's like your your, your then, personal Instagram is your daughter's Instagram mom. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's funny. I'm not very original. Like my username on dating sites literally is like Toxie. <laughs> so because I can't again. figure it out. And then when you have to add something, I add some digits. Well, when you use Which Toxie, are the same digits from my Instagram. You are already clever for Toxie, so you I might know. as well use it across multiple I platforms. I like the name. <laughs> One day, y'all are going to find me changing it to that. <laughs> Your real name to Toxie. Like my real name's gone. She's going to be Toxie like, O'Shea. start my whole new identity, Toxie O'Shea. 
It's great. So speaking of, you know, how I use names on dating apps and stuff, I have a story to share. Share away. I officially have my craziest dating story. Let's You're hear aware. It. I'm aware. I, I think I almost got a live Snapchat of it. Yes. I don't even know how to lead up to it. Like, Just start with so what, much more magic. Do you want to talk about what app you met on? I don't even remember. It's, I've, it's a gentleman. We met on one of the apps. Um, I've, we've been, nothing serious, but we've been like seeing each other, dating, whatever the kids call it, um, going out, talking to each other for a couple months. You know, again. Isn't that called hanging? Yeah, we'll call it hanging. It, like, it, it's also chill. called, because do you guys hook up? No. No? Oh, uh, yeah. It's it was just, just hanging. chilling. It's just it hanging. hanging. It was it's just, Netflix it was, and mild It was chill. one of those, like, nice ones where you, like, just get to know each other. So you hang out. You go out to dinner. He's he's the one where I literally one day just drove to California. And I'm, like, sending you messages like, hey, if I die, <laughs> here's where I'm headed. I'm, a... um, I'm like, please check my phone. <laughs> so it's one of those. So really nice guy. Um... You know, I tend to date dads, uh, which is something we'll talk about later, but I tend to date dads. So he's a dad, a couple teenagers, you know, just really nice until he bit me. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, did he bite your face? Because that's like a come he on. He bit my arm. Oh. He bit my arm. <laughs> so again, this isn't anything brand new. We have been out plenty of times. We talked on the regular. What led up to the biting of your arm? He was drinking. But what led up to the biting of your arm? Um, was there a conversation? Was there... I, I, okay, so in a way I feel kind of bad for sharing this story. Don't However, Nobody uh, knows he who fucking he is. bit me, so you get the story. Did he draw blood? <laughs> you don't bite me. No, he bruised me. But Did, you don't bite me enough that in the story. That's it. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Can you see it still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can. So, um, okay, so... We had it when, when we've gone out. I don't really think we've gotten drinks at any time, which also is, you know, a rarity for me. But it just so happened this night. He's like, hey, would you mind picking me up? I had a couple. I'm like, yeah, no big deal. You know, we were going out to dinner. I went to get him. He was already really pretty drunk. So I should have ended it there. There's a, I have a lot of would have, should have, could have. I should have ended it there and just been like, you know what? I'm not super comfortable. But I also kept thinking, like, I can knock him back. So. Yeah, you can. You know, whatever. I can't be a hypocrite. He's had a few drinks. He's being goofy. Um, we get to, we decide to have dinner, but at a place that's also a bar, which, mistake number two. Um, so he gets some more, but then his conversations get a little crazier, and my name now suddenly becomes, hey, dummy. Hey, asshole. He's like, you're being a bitch. Like, joking around as if we're buds. Like, hey, dummy. That and was so, probably warning sign number, number three. three. Yeah, yeah. And so I actually started, like, I became very uncomfortable. I, I immediately hit the point where I started to get super anxious. Um, if you know anything about me, that can come on really fast. I'm, I'm, I get anxiety really bad, and it was, it was there, and I'm going, like, how do I get out of this? At one point, I took my purse, I went to the restroom, and I'm like, I'm just going to ditch. Like, I'm going to go out. But I've actually never done that to anybody. And so I couldn't do it because, again, I drove him there, and I went to make sure he got home. So I went back, and this was this banter was going on. He was, like, making crude comments to the people next to us, and I'm going, I can't anymore. Like, I'm done. And we had ordered, and I said, let's just... Let's get this food to go. Like, we need to go. We just need to go. And he grabbed my arm. He's like, we're not going. And he grabbed my arm like he was gnawing on my arm. Only he did. And he fucking bit me and I started crying. <laughs> so now I'm in the bar with a drunk guy, crying, holding my arm. Did you scream at all, like, when he did it? Like, no, I, I'm like, ah, like, that hurt. And then, then that was it. Then it all came to head, and then I was just the crazy girl. The, 
bar bawling. <laughs> so I, I want to tell you something that if I had not known you and I was sitting at that bar, I would have come and said something. That's what I was going to ask. Not one person. Not one person. Not one person. Not one person. Not the bartender. Not the people next to us who shortly after got up, walked away, and gave me that look of like, sorry, you're dealing with this. N- nobody. You were nobody. physically assaulted by someone. Right. And then visibly upset by it and no right. one came to ask you if you were okay right that's correct that ladies and gentlemen is the fucking problem and why women don't fucking speak up when we're assaulted because nobody gives a shit although you all say you give a fuck if you saw a woman get bit on a date at a bar someone you didn't know would you go fucking say something at yeah. least say are you okay yeah no, i no, would no. walk over and be like hey man so did you just bite her <laughs> So I got upset. He started apologizing. I'm like, you know, that's fine. That's fine. I'm just going to, time to go. I'm just going to drop you off. Grabbed our stuff. When, like, we're in the car, we're driving. Again, he makes a comment. I I said something like, where do we turn for your street? And he's like, down here, dummy. And I'm like, nope, that's it. (laughs) I've already, and that was it. And I'm like, you've been doing that all fucking night. Like, it is not cool. It hasn't been cool. The other times you did it, the other time I called you out on it, and then you fucking bit me. Like, it's not okay. It's just not okay. Did you kick him out right then? No, I still tried to. I was almost there, so I took him the rest of the way home, and he got out. And at that point, he's like, do you want to come in? I'm like, no. Fucking crazy? What the fuck? What in the actual fuck? Like, So I was, uh, you know, uh, very timely. I just read an article, and it was very good. Uh, put out by scientists who did this research study, your morality does not change no matter how drunk or stoned you get. No matter how high or drunk you get, your morality base does not change. I actually become far more protective of other people the drunker I get. (laughs) I've kicked people out of bars that I was only drinking at because they were being assholes to the bartender. (laughs) I'm like... I have no interest in this bar beyond the fact that they just serve me alcohol and you're being an addict, so you need to get the fuck out so I can enjoy my alcohol. I'm far more likely to be more moral the more fucked up I am. Yeah, so did you, did you finally tell him? So I told him to get out. There were some other comments that he made, ones I, I believe I told you about, and I don't, I don't necessarily want to go into those because those kind of sucked. But um, Where do you stand now? Oh no, I'm I'm done. I was very clear. I he kept texting me as I left. And when I got home I, I said, like, listen, um, you bit me. Period. Like I wanna make sure you're safe tonight. I hope you get a great sleep, but you bit me. And um and I spent the whole evening being called names and it's that's just not happening. And I'm like, give me some time to process and then um then we can kinda reconnect. And then the next day, he started messaging me, and uh, he was texting me. And I'm like, you know what? Um, I mean, that was basically it. I'm like, you, you bit me. Yeah, that's <laughs> you bit but me. you, but you did more. leave the door open for reconnection. No, no, I wanted the door wasn't open for reconnection. The door was open to talking about it when he was sober. Oh. That's what it was. And then I since have even left that, that door open. since that conversation, he reached out to me one more time, and I didn't respond. So, yeah. see, here, wow. here's the deal. I've been bitten when I've asked to be bitten. Yeah, it's totally different. You know, when I'm when I'm already in a passionate relationship with you, in case you didn't know, I'm kind of into some weird shit. So, you know, being bitten not outside of the parameters of what might happen in a sexual intercourse with someone, but on a date in public around other people. When you haven't been intimate at all. When you haven't been intimate at all, that's fucking wrong. My my kid spent an entire Saturday with two poly groups who were also kinksters, and we spent most of the, when we weren't gaming or watching The Dark Crystal, which is amazing, go on Netflix and watch it. Um, we were talking about consent and being in these kinds of relationships, and he's like the only teenager there, so he's just sitting quietly listening to all of these. And I did something or said something the other day, and he's like, Mom, consent is sexy. I was like... Why are you always listening? <laughs> but I love the fact that you're not shy about having adult conversations around him. No, we, And this is how he absorbs it and picks it, it up. We don't go into intimate details, but we do. We've definitely talked about, 
how we got into being into kink or how we opened ourselves up to poly relationships or about how, um, you know, we've talked about shitty relationships that we were in that made us realize that consent is key <laughs> and that you shouldn't allow people to emotionally manipulate you into spending many, many years with them because, you know, they're an asshole. Um, <laughs> Just saying, uh, we're going to talk about that when we get into our single parent discussion next time we have a show. But consent is fucking sexy. And doing something to someone that may leave a physical mark without asking them if it's okay is physical assault. Biting someone and leaving a mark on them is enough for them to call the police on you. It is enough for you to get arrested for fucking assault. Leaving marks on another person without their consent is assault. Period. End of story. I don't care if you meant it playfully. I don't care if you were drunk and you took it a little too far. You fucking assaulted someone. Drunk is not an excuse. Drunk is not an excuse. I've done some stupid shit when I was drunk, but I have never assaulted anyone. I do it when I'm sober. <laughs> and with consent most of the time. <laughs> I my well, I'm sorry you had to go through all that, but I'm glad it's done. Right. Done. Right. And then what a wasted trip. Was the food good at least when you got it home? Yo, he ordered a shit ton of wings because he was drunk. And then I tried to hand him the bag and he's like, no. And he like pushed it down the ground and I'm like, fucking wings. And I went home <laughs> and I was texting a friend about it. I, I texted you about it as well, but I was texting another friend. My other friend is like, don't eat those. Those are shame wings. And I'm like... <laughs> no, those are fucking... <laughs> I was, those are victory wings. I was, <laughs> I was literally, like, surfing them down, sending photos. I have, like, you know, sauce all over my face. And I'm like, shame wings are delicious. <laughs> those aren't shame wings. Those are fucking victory wings. Those are... I stood up for my fucking self. Victory wings. Uh, Congrats Chris, for standing up so, for yourself. Christina says, uh, someone probably recorded it and posted it on social media. Most likely. Hey, you uh, super savvy uh, social media people out there, go find it. It was out of PT's, so... Oh, PT's food is good. PT's food is good. Like, literally, in the bucket of wings was like a bucket split into three. Wendy says, my dating wings. app is called Cheyenne. Never going to uninstall that one. Oh. Cheyenne, in quotes, is the name of her... Uh, significant other, by the way. Yeah. And Fernie says, yes, you do, Sierra. You protected me when we were out. I was pretty drunk yeah, when I did that, too. Yeah, we've witnessed your protectiveness firsthand many times. <laughs> yeah. I don't play with that. Like, you cannot fuck with my people. Honestly, you just can't fuck with people around me, because I will get up off my bar stool, and I will walk across the fucking bar, and I'll be like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Like, I, I'm usually pretty drunk when I do it, um, and it's really the only way I put strangers. I don't like, I'm not nice to them. Um, but I've I will. If you ever see me in a bar and I'm somewhat drunk and you're being assaulted, I will step in. <laughs> I might even do it sober. I'm just envisioning you. you because totally you're like, what, five, six? I'm five foot three and one five half three. inches. I was being generous. I didn't want to. I was going to go five foot 63 and a half so, inches. I was going to be like, you're like going up to the tallest dude in the bar. Like, <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> I really don't give a shit. That's actually more my voice, the high squeaky hey. We were discussing... <laughs> We're, uh, there's some management changes changes happening, and so we were sort of bantering about who's going to be the one who gets the call in the middle of the night when the um, alarm goes off, and I'm like, I'm 15 minutes from the office, so my boss will probably pick me, because I'm the closest, and uh, my coworker was like, oh, but, you know, a woman shouldn't go alone, and I'm like, first off, I have a CCW, second off, I'm trying to kill people with my hands, so I'm kind of okay, and she's like, oh, okay, that's another story. <laughs> Like, Did also, you tell? I'll, also, if you ha if I have to get up in the middle of the night and come to my office, I'm already going to be pissed off. I'm not walking in without my fucking Lucille baseball bat. Like, Lucy and I are going in after your ass. Did you tell them you sleep in <laughs> truck stop parking lot? <laughs> I do. I sleep for in. camping. Like, I lead with that. Then they know you're badass. Yeah, I'm like, I sleep at truck stop, bitches. Mm. <laughs> So, you know what I was cake. thinking when you were talking about Sierra standing up to the seven foot dude, right? Would you, do you think you would have gotten more attention or somebody would have stepped in more if you would have maybe screamed louder or stood up and said, What the fuck are you doing? 
No, if she'd defended herself, no one would have come over either. You think so? Yeah. And what is what is that going to do? Well, Am I'm going thinking... to upset him so then he swings and punches me? Like what? In public? He bit me! <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what's to say it's not going to be any more? Yeah, there's... there there. You really and write again, a fine line. And again, he bit me when I said it's we're going to wrap up the food. We're going to get the food to go. And then it was at that point where he's like... You know, we're not going to whatever. Chomp. <laughs> he grabbed you like that with both hands? Yeah. Like you and were a chomp. fucking chicken drumstick? Yeah. I was. Like a, a turkey dr- leg at Red Fair? Listen, I realize I got some chicken fluffy fat arms, but they don't taste that. You don't bite a girl like she's Sir Rodney's legs from the fucking fair. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> I don't know if that's an international thing, but they, locally, turkey legs are Sir Rodney's legs. <laughs> At our fair here, I wouldn't even fucking know that. The Ren Fair, those know, big giant turkey legs that. that you buy. I wouldn't know. I didn't know they have a name. Yeah, the booth is Sir Rodney's legs. I didn't Sir know Rodney's the turkey's legs. named after Rodney. Like, I don't go to the Ren Fair enough. She goes a lot. She goes every year. I'm I camping used to go with pirates when my daughter this was year. Hmm? We, she, we used to go. She would go with her daycare, and they would all dress up in costume. Mm-hmm. If that guy reaches out again, what are you going to do? Just ignore him? Yeah, I mean that's it. Or Good. Reply you told or you you under no there's no un, you unequivocally told him we're done. I did not use the unequivocally words that we're done. But essentially, there's no coming back from this. Like this is something that, um, aside from the names that you called me once again, you bit me. This isn't gonna work. Technically, she doesn't really owe him anything. She could just. No fucking ghost his ass but yeah nobody knows anybody what anything. makes y'all think i'm gonna give this anymore <laughs> like detailed finality than i would anything else come on <laughs> god <laughs> honestly if a dude slurps his drink wrong she's ghosting his ass so. god <laughs> i'm the worst i'm a shit human that's all i can say i'm a shit human why I'm not why? Thing. why you're not because i have because i i have no problem just being like I have seen the messages that you get in your inbox. I have seen the messages that a lot of girls get in their inbox. Yeah. And they are disgusting. And if you want to go somebody for slurping his drink wrong, fuck it. Yeah. You're even a you're a better human being just for stopping that from ever happening again to you. Yeah. You got hey, something to real add? Quick. Yeah. Yeah. I just I just read this yesterday or the day before and I forget which state it is now. But you can uh Sending an unsolicited dick pic is a crime now. Sending an unsolicited, unsolicited dick pic dick is a crime now? In what state? I, I, I don't remember. It's like New York or... Hell yeah. Someplace. I wouldn't be surprised if, surprised if it was New York. That's amazing, by the way. So, three Jasper, minutes. What the fuck are we going to Some of you all in? single because you chew gum like this. Oh, yeah. All the big lip smacky voice. <laughs> I think I chew gum like that. Um, yeah. In fact, as a matter of fact, in, with Inbox, you haven't posted any lately. Oh, I've been sharing them on my, um, I shared one or two on my Instagram, Instagram. and then another on my other one. Uh, Abby, who's watching, she just posted one, and horrible. Yeah, and you Fucking know, it's horrible. It's not, it's not, the, the horrible things people inbox other people with is not limited to just big girls from weird dudes. I have a business Facebook page, and I got inboxed um, an exorcism. Somebody tried to exercise me through my inbox. No, in, uh, in Latin, by the way. That is wicked cool. Yeah, so <laughs> I replied back to him, super thanks for the Latin lesson. I'm, I'm going to have to, oh, my phone's over there. I'm going to have to, I'll, I'll, whatever. Um, I said, super thanks for the Latin lesson, and then I pulled out a little bit of the Latin I know through Google Translate and said, may you, please listen to the wording to this carefully, may you find the joy you deserve and the love you have earned, which is a very tongue-in-cheek curse to fuck you. (laughs) That's way too much. They didn't get that. If they sent you a video of an exorcism, they didn't fucking get that's what you meant. They sent me, they sent me um, the first like line, and then each one is a w- each word of the rest of the exorcism individually is messages. I guess to try to get my attention, and like a short video of somebody being exorcised, and I was like, 
what the fuck, dude? First off, it's on a business page, and I think it was mostly because I said I would marry people who weren't Christian. Um, in case you didn't know, I'm a wedding officiant, and I do all of the things. She And she's legal, so don't get her drunk and ask her to marry you, because that shit's legal. It's legal. By the power invested in me by the Clark County and the state of Nevada, I do hereby recognize this marriage. Or some shit like that. <laughs> Or some shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. We were going to talk about we need a guest for next week. We're working on it. Okay. All right. All right. This is Alexia. Toxie. Sierra. And we'll see you next week. If you're brave enough. Later, bitches. Don't forget Patreon patches. Where's your peace sign? I prematurely peaced.